Welcome to Textonation. Joining us is Raymond Kiefer, GM Safety Technical Fellow. Thank you for joining us, Raymond. Thank you. Thanks for having me. And what we're talking about is uh, a study, a partnership that you uh, had with the University of Michigan, taking a look at which safety features are preventing crashes, how successful you've been. Give us a little background, first of all, of, of this uh, partnership with the University of Michigan Transportation Research Institute. Sure. Um, so GM has a zero crash vision that we're, you know, we're aimed at trying to save lives, reducing injuries and property damage caused by crashes. And so um, we uh, partnered with the University of Michigan Transportation Research Institute to conduct a large scale study. Uh, we looked at 15 different uh, safety related systems uh, in the field, and we wanted to see uh, if those systems were having the anticipated effects and if so, to what extent. Um, so tell us about some of the findings. Sure. Uh, so what we did find is that the results indicated that many of these GM systems are reducing uh, many types of common crashes, uh, including frontal crashes with vehicles and with hard to see animals, pedestrians and bicyclists. Uh, we saw reductions in lane change and lane departure crashes. And we also saw some pretty significant reductions in backing crashes. Or give us some examples here. So for automatic emergency braking, which is sometimes called forward automatic braking, we saw a reduction in rear end striking crashes by nearly half or 46%. And for reverse automatic braking, we found a very uh, significant reduction in backing crashes, uh, 81%. So the vast majority of those crashes are being avoided with this feature. Um, in addition, when we uh, looked at auto beam headlight coupled with IntelliBeam, uh, I'm sorry, when we looked at the auto high beam headlight feature coupled with high intensity discharge headlamps, we saw a reduction in nighttime crashes uh, for hard to see road users such as animals, pedestrians, and bicyclists by nearly uh, half, so 49% reduction. So these are some big uh, crash reduction numbers, and we're hoping that these data generate further interest in use of these systems. Tell us about the, the, the rollout of uh, many of these features into, into the line of vehicles. So many of these features are already broadly available on most GM models. Um, for example, um, it, the uh, automatic emergency braking, uh, we're committed to a voluntary industry agreement to roll that out uh, such that it'll be standard on virtually all vehicles by the end of 22. And um, we're offering that feature standard on eight 2020 models, including uh, various Cadillacs, Buick, Chevrolets, and GMCs. So we're seeing more and more of this. There have been some studies that uh, J.D. Power came out with something recently showing that Quite a few people, depending on how these features are implemented, uh, quite a few people actually turn some things off when, when they're able to because they get annoyed with sometimes lane departure warnings and things like that. What's your message when you look at a study like this? What's your message to those consumers? Well, you're not going to get the benefits of feature, obviously, if you turn it off. And uh, so um, we have tried to take some some measures at GM to make, uh, in particular, uh, lane departure uh, more uh, acceptable to customers uh, by using a safety alert seat, which uses vibrations instead of beeps, which uh, some drivers find annoying. Interesting. So going forward, I mean, this is all, this is all a step, an incremental kind of thing to, to more automated vehicles. What do you see happening here in terms of uh, reducing numbers of crashes overall? Well, I think one of the biggest findings of this study was that automatic control oriented fash or I'm sorry, automatic control oriented features um, had the bigger benefits um, relative to their alert only counterparts. So I think that bodes well for you know moving toward more uh, automated systems. Um, you know, right now, you know, drivers still need to pay attention when they're driving, um, but these automatic control oriented features have an advantage of, you know, not strictly relying on a driver to respond quickly with the right action we're hoping for. And um, these automatic braking features can sometimes respond pretty quickly to sudden crash situations that a driver may have difficulty responding to.
What are your thoughts about the possibly the need for more consumer education, whether it's in dealerships or, or elsewhere? Yeah, consumer education is obviously really important, and we tried to work hard at GM to uh, to put uh, you know videos together that are available via a driver's uh, smartphone on their MyBrand apps at GM um, to try and make these um, features relatively easy to uh, to understand and use. And of course, we we encourage our customers also to review the owner's manual. Tell, tell us a little bit more about the, some of the methodology used in, in this study with the University of Michigan. Yeah, so we provided um, the University of Michigan Transportation Research Institute a, a, basically a database that indicated the safety equipment on each vehicle. So we handed over to them over 3.7 million VINs. And then Umtree searched for matches, uh, or, or I should say vehicles for people not familiar with the term VIN. Umtree then searched for, for matches in police report data from 10 different states uh, that they had access to. And they um, matched our database to those crashes. And then they searched for uh, crashes that were relevant to a given safety system. So for example, reverse automatic braking is designed to address backing crashes or mitigate those crashes. And then they also search for control crashes that should be unaffected by the system. So for example, being rear-ended by another vehicle. And then they did that search for vehicles with the safety system and vehicles without. And then uh, they went up and used uh, advanced statistics to assess whether the system had a statistically significant effect on reducing crashes. And if so, what was the size of that benefit? And obviously there's still lots of work to do. The technology gets better all of the time. Automatic emergency braking only works, I guess, in, in certain circumstances, uh, th that kind of thing. So we're, we're looking forward to things getting better, right? Uh, yeah, obviously we're always trying to, uh, you know, in this case, trying to really work toward the zero crash vision. And, um, you know, these systems didn't, didn't eliminate all crashes, but it, it gave us clues on how to improve things. For more information, is there a place where people can go to on this? Sure, there's a Umtree report uh, that's uh, released, I believe, today, um, and uh, it can be accessed at, at their website. And if you want to search for it, it's the University of Michigan Transportation Research Institute. Raymond Kiefer, thank you so right. much for taking the time with us. Thank you. Now this. How many companies out there have continued to innovate when it comes to building a better radio? I'm Fred Fishkin, host of Textonation, and I'm here to tell you about the new CC SkyWave SSB radio from the wonderful people at C-Crane. Bob and his crew really love radio, and it shows in this new compact model that is packed with features. Beyond great AM and FM reception and sound, you can tune into shortwave signals from around the world. Listen to ham radio operators, aviation, and more. It's the radio you'll turn to every day and in emergencies. It will run for nearly three days on just two AA batteries. Pair the sleep timer with the new Soft Speaker 3, and you've got the perfect radio for your nightstand. Of course, it can wake you up too. Click on Ccrane at textination.com and put in the code textination for a free flashlight with your order. They love radio. And you'll love Sea Crane.